what, what I will say in connection with that is that there are a lot of folks out there uh, who are making predictions about when this will be over. And one of the things that I've learned in, in, in my life is that zealots and charlatans are sure, but wise people have doubts. And so in this situation, I've got doubts. Maine's health officials say there is still too much uncertainty to make recovery plans based on specific dates and timelines. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday night. I'm Cindy Williams. I'm Pat Callahan. That uncertainty about the future is countered by the very real, sober statistics we have now. Today, the Maine Center for Disease Control announced that 965 people from Maine have contracted COVID-19. Nearly 500 have recovered. 39 people are currently in the hospital. Three more people have died, bringing the total dead from COVID-19 to 47. In addition to health concerns, a lot of Mainers are worried about their finances. We've heard from many of you who are self-employed and are frustrated that you haven't been able to receive the benefits provided by the CARES Act, which was passed in late March. One man who reached out to us is John Chase, a self-employed long-haul truck driver from Berwick who is not working right now because of safety concerns. He knows drivers in other states who are already receiving benefits. Chase says he understands the state labor department is overwhelmed right now, but he'd like to hear something from them other than how hard they're all working. What I would like is even if it's something that's not, um, um, it's not good news, just something, just, just say, okay, well, we can't do it. We can't do it until say May 15th or we can't do it until June 1st. Just say something. And so many people, especially the self-employed, have expressed that same frustration to us over the last month or so. That unemployment checks aren't coming and their money is about to or has already run out. Today, the woman in charge of unemployment benefits in Maine stepped up to the microphone at the daily COVID-19 briefing to answer some tough questions about that. New Center Maine's Don Carrigan has more on what Labor Commissioner Laura Fortman and Maine CDC Director Dr. Nirav Shah had to say this afternoon. Don? Hi, Pat. Still don't have a precise answer to when self-employed people will be getting their benefits, but they'll get a little bit more news early, sometime next week. So aside from the frustrations of all those apply, trying to get regular unemployment benefits, which Com Labor Commissioner Laura Fortman says she understands, self-employed uh, people like that truck driver have been very frustrated that the special program created for them by the federal government called Pandemic Assistance Benefits still isn't available yet. Uh, the uh, Commissioner Fortman said the program has a lot of details to figure out and it is, it is a difficult process. I don't think that we have any particular challenges that other states are not facing. And our goal here is to make sure that when we roll this benefit out, that it is taking into consideration all of the people who are eligible for it and that we are accurately providing benefits up front so that we do not have to rework um, the system as we move along. I believe strongly that our approach will deliver accurate benefits in a timely manner. And Commissioner Fortman said that she will announce next week when self-employed people can begin applying for benefits, but no timeline yet given for when those checks will actually start to be written. There are also no answers yet whether Maine's current stay-at-home order will be continued beyond next week when it's currently set to expire. Governor Mills said yesterday she, uh, she hasn't made up her mind on that yet and will look to science and the health experts like Dr. Shaw for advice. And he too today was not ready to make a commitment. We really do need to make these decisions looking at the data which are quickly evolving on a day-by-day -day basis. Earlier this week, we had a day where we only had eight cases. And then we had days where we had double digits and multiple individuals who passed away. It's really emblematic of how quickly this outbreak and any outbreak can change. And so thinking about what might be a particular policy position that would or would not be enacted even seven days from now, even though that's not a lot of time, is really challenging. Uh, our, my goal and my, my, my view is that 
we take a look at the data as they come in. There is no necessity for making a decision today about what we might do a week from now. And so we're looking at the data all the time on, an, on a constant basis, and I'm in close contact with commissioner's office and the governor's office as we're spotting trends and as we're seeing changes. Dr. Shah speaking today. The governor has to decide by next Thursday. And incidentally, getting back to Labor Commissioner Fortman, if you want to hear all of her comments uh, made at today's briefing, and there were a lot of them about the unemployment issue, you can go to our New Center main website, click on the Daily Coronavirus blog, and the recording of the entire briefing will be there. Uh, Pat and Cindy, back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Don. Across the state, hospitals have had to pivot, not only when it comes to treating COVID-19 patients, but also in limiting other services. And that means a drastic drop in revenue. News Center Maine's Hannah Deneen joins us now with more on this. Hannah? Cindy, that's right. The elective side of the hospital business is completely shut down right now. And that's a problem because those elective procedures, they're huge moneymakers for Maine's hospitals. And at some of the state's smaller rural hospitals, some of which were already struggling before the coronavirus, this could be a devastating blow. The financial tsunami hitting us is not to be overstated. Maine's hospitals say they're losing an estimated $250 million or more every month while many of their services are on hold because of coronavirus. We're trying to keep the doors open and the lights on to deal with the obvious crisis and pay our employees, but we are getting killed financially. That's because money that would normally be coming in from elective and non-urgent procedures just isn't there. Our patient volume is significantly down. Crystal Landry is the CEO of Penobscot Valley Hospital in Lincoln. She says her hospital is operating at 50% below its normal volume. It's imaging, lab testing, everything across the board is about 50% down from where, what we typically see in the month of April. And that means the hospital is bringing in just half the money it typically does. It's a big hit for a hospital that was struggling long before COVID-19. We are a hospital that is working under a Chapter 11 bankruptcy process. We did file uh, over a year ago. Penobscot Valley isn't the only small hospital that's struggling. MDI Hospital says its revenue from treating patients is down anywhere from 50 to 60 percent. With drastic losses like that, hospitals are looking for federal aid. We need to have access to good, solid uh, funding. We're, you know, we're anxiously awaiting additional distributions under the, the CARES Act. Without it, these professionals say the future of rural health in Maine looks bleak. Without very substantial and continuous federal help, uh, we're going to see some very unfortunate things without, without something changing. Rural towns, rural communities need access to care, and that's what critical access hospitals provide. And that access, perhaps more important now than ever before. These rural hospitals, they're also often the largest or one of the largest employers in their regions. Now, Maine Hospital Association President Stephen Michaud, he says that all of Maine's hospitals are working around the clock right now to figure out what getting these hospitals back on board, reopening them, what that looks like. But he says it will be weeks before that process starts. And even then, it will be a slow and gradual process. Cindy, back to you. Ah, really tough. All right, Hannah, thank you so much.